Week 10 of the 2024 fantasy football season is in the books, and we're headed straight into week 11 of the fantasy season. So you know exactly what we need to do. We need to go through every single matchup and break down every single player and talk about who you should be starting and who you should be sitting. Before we do so, let me remind you guys that Underdog is the place you want to be if you want to get in on additional fantasy football action all season long. Their Week 11 NFL Pickums are already going live, and Underdog is giving all new users who sign up with promo code the catch a free NFL Pickum to use towards Week 11's action. And on top of that, Underdog is also giving all new users who sign up with promo code the catch a 50% deposit match up to $1,000. So that's a free NFL pick em for the week and up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you sign up with promo code THECATCH. That link is down below. All right, very quickly, we have four teams on bye week here in week 11. We'll be without the Carolina Panthers, so no Xavier Leggett or Jalen Coker. Without the New York Giants, so no Malik Neighbors, Wanda Robinson, etc. No Tampa Bay Buccaneers, so no Sterling Shepard, no Jalen McMillan. Hopefully we get Mike Evans back in week 12. And we'll be without the Arizona Cardinals, so no Marvin Harrison Jr., Michael Wilson, anyone else there on that team. So make sure you guys are checking your lineups and making adjustments accordingly. All right, let's kick the video off with Thursday Night Football. We're going to have the Washington Commanders traveling to face the Philadelphia Eagles. And let's start with Terry McLaurin, who has been absolutely fantastic on the season. He is a must-start wide receiver on a weekly basis no matter what. Now, this Eagles secondary is playing better as of late. This defense looks very sound overall, but we're not going to risk benching Terry McLaurin, who's a top five fantasy football wide receiver on the season. 16.3 fantasy points in week 10, six targets, five catches, 113 receiving yards. Keep rolling with Terry McLaurin no matter what. Now, I thought potentially in week 11, maybe we could get some sort of production out of Noah Brown as he had had double digits two weeks in a row, uh, but just 6.3 fantasy points, seven targets, three grabs, 33 receiving yards. Uh, it would just be really nice to see somebody step up as a true number two wide receiver on this team, but I just don't know if that's going to happen this season. Luke McCaffrey had three targets. Uh, Zacchaeus had three targets. They combined for less than four fantasy points. So we're going to stay away from any Washington Commanders wide receiver that is not scary. Terry, on the other hand, if you own an Eagles wide receiver, well, you are in a good place. You can start either A.J. Brown or Devonta Smith on a weekly basis. Now, Devonta Smith is starting the week as a uh, non-participant in practice as he has been dealing with that hamstring injury. He played in week 10, he didn't do a whole lot, but the game script didn't really need him to do a whole lot. That could certainly be different as the Commanders are a very different team than the Dallas Cowboys uh, here in week 11. So I'm not going to panic about Devonta Smith. I know it was a bad game in week 10. I expected much better things out of Devonta Smith this past week. And maybe we want to pay attention to that hamstring injury. There is a chance that he misses this week, being that this is a Thursday night matchup. But overall, if Devonta Smith starts, I'm still going to roll with him in what should be a good competitive divisional matchup. Johnny Wilson did score a touchdown this past week, but that was his only catch. Jahan Dotson had one catch as well. It's just A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith. We're still not considering any other Eagles wide receiver as we move in to week 11. Next up, we have the Raiders traveling to face the Dolphins. Jacoby Myers has been great. I mean, just been great. 18.5 fantasy points in week nine. The last time we saw him play, uh, 11 targets, eight catches, 105 receiving yards. Uh, he's been fantastic. And this is a bad matchup. Don't get me wrong, as the Dolphins have been pretty good against the uh, pass throughout the uh, entirety of the season for the most part but i want to keep rolling with jacoby myers good floor here maybe the ceiling is a little bit capped against the miami dolphins pass defense but 
I'm not going to overthink it here. Myers is a strong start, a good flex option, somebody that we should be able to trust here in week 11. Uh, as far as anybody else on this team at the wide receiver position, Trey Tucker, DJ Turner, just stay far away. The only startable player is Jacoby Myers at the wide receiver position. And then uh, I do have to record these videos uh, before Monday Night Football has been played. I apologize. The only way I can get these done and out for you guys. Um, but Tyree Kill, the Miami Dolphins, have not seen these guys play. And Hill is going to play tonight. Uh, but what exactly are we going to get? I don't know. But maybe we'll come back and reevaluate the Dolphins wide receivers as the week goes on. But I'm basically looking at Terry Kill as a good start this week against the Raiders, although the Raiders have been better against the past than you may think. And I, I'm i just not doing it with Jalen Waddle. Now, you guys are going to crucify me in the comments down below if Waddle has a big game against the Rams, which it is a good enough matchup. But uh, until we see it happen with Jalen Waddle, I'm just staying away. I just have no interest. He has had no ceiling on the season outside of week one against the worst defense in the NFL and the Jacksonville Jaguars. So uh, I'm just staying away from Jalen Waddle. I have no interest. We'll see what Hill does as he is dealing with an injury here in, or going into Monday Night Football. Uh, I still think he's startable. He's definitely not my favorite start, but maybe Monday Night Football changes my perspective. As always, uh, if there's any major injury in Monday Night Football, uh, if there's a, a huge game like for Jalen Waddle or whatever. There will be a pen comment down below. I'll let you guys know my thoughts, but we'll see what happens here in week 11 between the Raiders and the Dolphins. Next up, we have the Browns traveling to face the Saints. So huh, I was a little lazy with this one. Uh, the last time we saw the Browns play was week nine against the Chargers. Jerry Judy had 14.3 fantasy points. Elijah Moore, just 5.8 fantasy points and said Tillman 19 and a half fantasy points. So, I think all of these Browns wide receivers are flexible against the New Orleans Saints. They don't really intimidate me too much. Uh, I think the best option, the most upside is Cedric Tillman. I think Judy has a pretty safe floor. I think the riskiest option is Elijah Moore. So, yeah, I, I would feel the most comfortable starting Cedric Tillman, but all three of these players do have some sort of flex appeal on the road here against the Saints. but. Am I going to go out of my way to start a Browns wide receiver? Probably not. And if I was, it would be Cedric Tillman. Now, on the other side here, I mean, what in the world do we have going on with the Saints wide receivers room? Uh, Marquez Valdez Scatling. Uh, 25.9 fantasy points off of three catches, 109 receiving yards, two touchdowns. I don't quite think that's going to happen again in week 11, but it is a good matchup against the Cleveland Browns secondary that's been pretty dang bad so far on the season. Um, if you're desperate, you could risk MBS, but we want to be very careful about chasing points here. This was still a performance that, uh, you know, the result came from a, a very low volume game, just three targets, three catches. So let's not get too excited here. Probably worth rostering. We talked about MVS in the waiver wire video for the week, but I don't know that I, I want to throw him into my starting lineup. But the matchup is there. We'll have to see what happens. Now, uh, in terms of any other wide receiver on this team, I mean, Mason Tipton, Jermaine Jackson, zero catches, Cedric Wilson out. Bub Means on IR, Rashid Shahid on IR, Chris Olave on I mean, yeah, we just can't risk any of these players. But the matchup is there for MBS, and in theory, the volume should be there for MBS as well. Uh, if it's not going to Alvin Kamara or Taysom Hill or one of the other tight ends on this team. So we'll see what happens. Good matchup, but yeah, I'm just not overly excited about this one in Week 11. Next up, we have the Colts traveling to face the Jets. Let's start with the Colts side of things with Josh Downs, who I still think is a good start. This Jets secondary. Yeah, Sauce Gardner plays, whatever. I mean, they just don't really scare me. Uh, bad matchup for Josh Downs in Week 10 against Buffalo. Still had 14.2 fantasy points, 10 targets, 7 catches, 72 receiving yards. Uh, Joe Flacco, not so great. 272 passing yards, did throw two touchdowns, three picks better i guess in theory outside of the three picks than he was in week nine he also had a lost fumble 
Yeah, I'm not overly excited about the Colts offense outside of like JT this week, but I think the next most startable player is easily Josh Down. So he is still in the start category. In terms of any of the other Colts wide receivers, Michael Pittman missed this past week against the Buffalo Bills. I, I just can't do it with Pittman for now. 9.3 or less fantasy points in his last three starts missed this past week. I know Alec Pierce reappeared this past week with 18.1 fantasy points. The volume was... Not great. Four catches off of seven targets. 81 receiving yards and a touchdown. I mean, Alec Pierce has to make his monthly appearance. I mean, uh, I, I just can't do it. It's way too risky. It's way too risky for me. A.D. Mitchell, six targets, six grabs. Maybe worth paying attention to if Michael Pittman misses this week. If Pittman plays, then I don't think we can trust A.D. Mitchell. Ashton Dolan, 0.7 fantasy points. So, yeah, I'm just not trusting any Colts wide receiver outside of Josh Downs. And even with Downs, I'm a little bit worried about his upside right now, the way that this Colts offense looks. Now, I'm going to continue to roll with Garrett Wilson. I know this past week was bad. The past game was bad this past week. Rodgers got a little banged up. He's not on the injury report right now. Was able to play all that stuff. Um, I am a little bit worried. I still have Wilson and Adams as starts and maybe Adams should be more in like a flex type area, but it is an okay matchup this week against the Colts. I think they can bounce back. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could see like if you own Adams and you have other options, yeah, you can definitely bench Adams this week. Xavier Gibson, uh, Malachi Corley, anybody else on this roster at the wide receiver position. I mean, um, Gibson and Corley combined for one catch this past week. So Garrett Wilson is really the only wide receiver that I want to start when it comes to the Jets. And then I would argue that I probably should have Adams more in like a flex area going into the week, but he is startable due to matchup here. And let's just cross our fingers. We get something going in week 11 in terms of the Jets passing attack. Except we have the Vikings traveling to face the Tennessee Titans. Let's start with Justin Jefferson coming off of a bad game in week 10 and a very good matchup against the Jags. 9.8 fantasy points, nine targets, five catches, 48 receiving yards. This was JJ's First single-digit performance on the season against the Jaguars. What? <laughs> um, and Sam Darnold, not so great this past week. Threw three picks, was 24 or 38, 241 passing yards, uh, 28 rushing yards. So what's going on here? Hopefully this doesn't roll over into week 11 and these uh, you know turnovers in the passing game gets a little bit fixed up. I mean, in week nine, Darnold threw two picks, but was able to salvage things by throwing three touchdowns. We kind of forgot about it. And you would think against the Jags, he could have at least thrown one touchdown. Uh, I mean, they, the Vikings basically dominated the Jaguars and still barely won that game against Mac Jones. So um, let's not. Overthink it here, though. Justin Jefferson is a start every week, no matter what. And this is a little bit of a not not so great matchup. The Titans are surprisingly pretty good against opposing wide receivers fantasy wise. But start Justin Jefferson. Don't overthink it. He'll be fine. Now, Jordan Addison, I've kind of liked as a flex option over the past couple weeks and then didn't really show up against the Lions or the Rams. Then he showed up against the Colts. So I liked him again this past week against the Jags and you guys know the story. I mean, he just didn't show up, and this passing offense was not so great. So I got Addison down to the sit category. Sure, if you're desperate for a flex play, you could risk him. He'll, at worst, get you a couple points. At best, has a ceiling of 16 fantasy points in the past four weeks, but I, too inconsistent. I, I don't understand the underutilization of Addison in the game plan. He should be more involved, but it is what it is. And now Hawkinson's in the mix, getting plenty of targets as well. Uh, Jalen Naylor, just three targets, one catch this past week, 1.4 fantasy points. Staying away from Jalen Naylor, no reason to start him. Now, Calvin Ridley I have as a flex. And quite frankly, um, this is another one that should be kind of changed. Calvin Ridley should be probably a start this week. Actually, you know what? We're upgrading Calvin Ridley to a start this week as he has 12.3 or more fantasy points in each of the last three games with no DeAndre Hopkins. 25.4 fantasy points this past week against a good Chargers defense. Nine targets, five catches, 84 receiving yards, and two receiving touchdowns. Will Levis, better than I thought he would be. Uh, with no interceptions. He did have a fumble. wasn't a lost fumble. 175 passing yards, 18 to 23, 41 yards on the ground. The big thing for Levis, no interceptions against the Chargers defense in Week 10. 
Uh, I do worry about this passing attack for the Titans this week against the Vikings. I do think that could impact Calvin Ridley. That's why I initially had him in the flex area, but he's been great the past couple weeks. Uh, The weakest part of this Vikings defense is the secondary. So you own Calvin Ridley. I think he is a good start this week. In terms of anybody else on this roster, Tyler Boyd, Nick Westbrook, Akini, we're staying away here. No reason to start these guys here in week 11. The way Calvin Ridley has been playing the past couple weeks, I am going straight to underdog to take the over on his receiving yards, currently sitting at 56 and a half receiving yards. He has hit that in his past three games. The weakest part of this Vikings defense is the secondary. I do think that they could put together a good game plan against Will Levis and company this week, but either way, I think that Calvin Ridley can muster up 57 receiving yards. So I would be heading straight to underdog to take the over on Ridley's receiving yards. Don't forget, all new users who sign up with promo code the catch that link is down below are getting a free NFL pick'em to use towards week 11's action. Take your free pick'em. Take the over on Ridley's receiving yards. Once both of those lines hit, you're going to triple your cash entry. And on top of that, as long as you sign up with promo code the catch on Underdog, you're also going to receive a 50% deposit match up to $1,000. Moving along, we got the Packers traveling to face the Bears. Let's start with the Packers side of things. And uh, I will start Jaden Reed here in week 11 against the Bears. Uh, You know, still on paper, not a great matchup. Jalen Johnson, all that stuff. But I'm just not worried about the Bears defense whatsoever. I, I, I just... Listen, the, the Bears can, can come back to earth at any point in time and have that strong defense, have a better offense that they had shown. They show that against really bad teams. I, I just don't feel very confident in the Bears right now, offensively or defensively. Jaden Reed, in his last performance, told you guys to keep the faith going into Week 9. He had a, you know two down games, but six targets, five ga- grabs, 113 receiving yards, 16.3 fantasy points in Week 9 against the Lions as the Packers were on bye week in Week 10. So I'm going to stick with Jaden Reed. I still think he's a good start right now. I'm um, still the number one wide receiver here. I know this wide receiver room is just like, you could start any of these guys if you want. You never know what you're going to get. I think the most flexible player is Romeo Dobbs going into week 11, um, at least in comparison to Christian Watson or Dontavion Wicks, but you just never know. I got asterisks on Wicks and Watson. They could always do something. Any of these guys can score. This has got to be the most frustrating wide receiver room when it comes to fantasy football, Uh, maybe other than the Bears. But I will start Jaden Reed. The player I would be most willing to take a chance on outside of him is Romeo Dobbs. But hey, you never know on a weekly basis what's going to happen with this bunch. Now, DJ Moore, I've tried to keep the faith here. I'm done. I'm over. I I apologize if you guys had had any faith in DJ Moore in the past couple weeks because of me trying to keep the faith. I'm done with it until we see consistent games out of DJ Moore and more importantly, maybe out of Caleb Williams that lead to DJ Moore having double digits. I'm just done here. Six targets, three grabs, 24 receiving yards, 5.7 fantasy points in week 10, single digit fantasy performances, four games in a row. I'm staying away from DJ Moore. I've had very little interest in Keenan Allen on the season. Um, He's been better than DJ Moore in the past three weeks, but I'm staying away from Keenan Allen. Um, I'm staying away from Roma Dunze. No consistency here. The passing game has been awful. The Packers secondary has been good on the season. Just no thank you. I don't want to start any Bears wide receivers going in to week 11. Moving along, we're going to take a look at the Jaguars traveling to face the Lions. And boy, oh boy, talk about two different teams here. So let's start with the Jags side of things. Oh man, I've been trying to keep the faith in Brian Thomas. Pretty good matchups the past two weeks. And I think I'm just sitting Brian Thomas, especially if Trevor Lawrence is not able to play in week 11. Um, I, I think that there's a chance they keep T Law off of IR going into the week 12 bye week to let Trevor Lawrence maybe have more time to make the decision if he's going to have season ending surgery. Uh, the injury to his shoulder is on his non throwing shoulder. So this is a very murky situation. Um, 
which will lead Mac Jones as starting quarterback. And Jones only threw for 111 passing yards, two picks. Uh, did run for a touchdown, also had a lost fumble this past week. But this Lions defense has looked really good. I know they started a little shaky against the Texans and shut out the Texans the second half of the game. I mean, uh, the Lions defense, I think, could have a pretty monstrous game. I know their secondary has been the weaker part of that defense, but I I'm just not starting Brian Thomas. Uh, maybe things change coming out of the bye week, but... I, I'm very, very concerned if you're a Brian Thomas Jr. owner, and you guys know on the season I've been basically uh, in favor of starting Brian Thomas Jr. on a weekly basis, but I don't quite think we're at that point anymore. Gabe Davis, 2.9 fantasy points this past week. Parker Washington, zero fantasy points this past week. So staying away from this Jags wide receiver room. Going into week 11, certainly very unfortunate. Now, we are starting Amon Ross St. Brown on a weekly basis, no matter what. He has a touchdown in every game since week three. We are starting Amon Ross St. Brown, 18 fantasy points in week 10, eight targets, six grabs, 60 receiving yards, and a tutty. Keep rolling with them. It's a fantastic matchup. No reason whatsoever to ever bench Amon Ross St. Brown outside of injury. Jamison Williams, I was hoping to get a little bit more out of in week 10. Thought the matchup was there. I really like starting wide receivers against that Texan secondary. They played better than expected for at least most of the game. Uh, but he did get some nice involvement, I guess. Five targets, three catches, 53 receiving yards, 8.3 fantasy points. Still made some uh, plays in this game. I still think he's a good flex this week because the Jags defense is that bad. So maybe not my favorite flex, but the flex appeal is certainly there going into week 11. Uh, anybody else on this roster? Uh, Khalif Raymond, who's a little bit banged up. Tim Patrick. Allen Robinson. We're staying away from all of these players. Start Amon Ra. Some flex appeal with uh, Jameson Williams. Any of those Jags wide receivers, we're just staying away from here in week 11. Next up, we have the Rams traveling to face the Patriots. Now, once again, as a reminder, I have to record these before Monday Night Football, so I'm sorry if there's any major injury. If anything happens that changes my opinion, uh, we will have a pinned comment down below. But yeah, I'm going to start Cooper Cup. I'm going to start Puka Nakua. I'm going to start both of these players as long as they're healthy on a weekly basis. Um, you know, Miami's past defense has been pretty good on the season, so we'll see what happens in Monday Night Football. But regardless, I feel pretty good of um, about both these wide receivers against the Patriots uh, secondary. Now, Demarcus Robinson, I'm not exactly expecting another huge game out of against the Dolphins because that pass defense has been, been pretty good. But, you know, this is kind of the uh, reason why Demarcus Robinson shines at times is because opposing defenses have to apply their defensive pressure to Cooper Cup and or Puka Nakua. So, I still think Demarcus Robinson could have a decent game in Week 10, and even if he doesn't, I think he could end up having a decent game in Week 11 because, once again, opposing defenses have to account for Cup and Puka Nakua. So I think Robinson is still an okay flex on a week-in, week-out basis, but he's going to be a little bit volatile. He's not going to have two touchdowns every single week. Uh, but outside of that, yeah, I, I, Jordan Whittington is you know back to practice. Um, we'll see if he gets involvement. Tutu Atwell can always do something. Tyler Johnson. I mean, there's plenty of names here, but uh, outside of the three names you see on the screen, I, I'm sitting everyone else unless something major happens. All right. When it comes to the Patriots wide receivers, I don't want to start anybody. I, I just don't. I we just I just don't know how to trust this bunch. We've seen a little bit of volume out of Kayshawn Booty lately. Uh, Demario Douglas, nine or more fantasy points in his last two games. Kendrick Bourne is a player kj osborne is a player <laughs> you know kendrick Bourne had no snaps this past week uh javon baker there are rumors he was going to start to get more involved uh i just you know i i'm not excited whatsoever about any of these players uh jalen polk had one catch that went for a touchdown it's just all over the place with this Patriots wide receiver room. There's no real upside. I mean, it's a good matchup. Somebody can do something here, but I don't want to have to try and find out in my starting lineup, even with injuries and bye weeks. This is not a wide receiver room that I want anything to do with going into week 11. Next up, we have the Ravens traveling to face the Steelers. Should be a nice little divisional matchup to the best teams in the NFL. And, um, I will continue to start Zay Flowers. Disappointing game against the Bengals. Complete shootout. 
everyone was scoring tons of offense. Not a lot of Zay Flowers. Six targets, four catches, 34 receiving yards, 7.4 fantasy points. Uh, but I'm still going to start Zay Flowers. Uh, the ceiling's too high. We saw that ceiling in week nine against a good Broncos secondary, 29.7 fantasy points and two tutties. Uh, I'm starting Zay Flowers. It is a, not a great matchup on paper, but I'm still rolling with them. Deontay Johnson, uh, we haven't seen a whole lot out of. Um, I've gotten some questions about should I drop Deontay Johnson. It really depends on who you're dropping him for. He will get more involvement as the season goes on. Uh, but going from zero targets to two targets in a complete shootout game didn't, didn't give me a lot of confidence. Uh, but once again, it was a short week going into week 10 for the, the Ravens. So uh, I don't know if you had to drop him per se, but I'm definitely not confident in starting him yet. Tylen Wallace had the big touchdown in week 10, but you know he only had a big fantasy day because of the big touchdown. Um, I don't think he's going to be a factor this week. Nelson Aguilar, 7.6 fantasy points. He did have a touchdown. And my guy, Rashad Bateman, I think he's always kind of in the flex area, I suppose, but very, very, very volatile. There's been times on the year where we've liked Bateman. Uh, he was one of our best calls in week seven with 22.1 fantasy points. Uh, but since then, 3.8, 5.5 in this past week, 17.4. So very volatile. If I was going to take a chance on anyone other than Zay Flowers, it would be Bateman. Um, but I wouldn't feel so great about it. And we might see more Deontay Johnson this week. Who knows? But I'm going to start Zay Flowers this week. I'm also going to start George Pickens on a weekend, week out basis. This is a smash matchup. I think I could line up in a Steelers uniform this week, and I might have a chance of at least catching a go route <laughs> against this Ravens secondary. They are Swiss cheese. They are banged up. They are awful and that showed on thursday night football so pickens 20 and a half fantasy points seven targets five catches 91 receiving yards a touchdown in week 10 against washington uh since russell wilson is the starting quarterback for the steelers pickens is the wide receiver three in fantasy football averaging over 18 fantasy points per game start him this week he is a must start player against this raven secondary now there certainly should be some sort of opportunity for mike williams or calvin austin or um van jefferson sorry um but i don't really want to guess who i know mike williams had the game winning touchdown against washington 10 fantasy points calvin austin had had some splashes in previous weeks and van jefferson had also had some splashes in in previous weeks but yeah, I, I don't want to try and find out in my starting lineup going into week 11, but you can always take a gamble here because the matchup is there. So for the most part, I don't want to risk it with any wide receiver in this game outside of Flowers or Pickens here in week 11. I am sprinting to underdog to take the over on George Pickens receiving yards, sitting at 66 and a half receiving yards. He has smashed that in the past three games and the Ravens have the worst secondary, arguably, in the whole NFL, allowing the most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. So head straight to underdog. Take the over on Pickens' total receiving yards. And don't forget, all new users who sign up with promo code DCATCH, that link is down below, are getting a free NFL Pick'em to use towards Week 11. Take your free Pick'em. Take the over on Pickens' total receiving yards. Once both of those lines hit, you're going to automatically triple your cash entry. And on top of that, Underdog is also going to give you a 50% deposit match up to $1,000 when you sign up with promo code DCATCH. Up, we have the Seattle Seahawks who will travel to face the San Francisco 49ers. Well, what do we do with the Seahawks wide receiver room? Hmm. Metcalf is back on the practice field as he has missed the last two weeks and the Seahawks had a bye week in week 10. So hopefully that will indicate that he is good to go finally here in week 11. Hopefully the bye week helped him get some rest. And uh, as he's been dealing with that knee injury, it is easy to forget that Metcalf still having a very good season, uh, single digits in three games on the season, double digits in four games on the season. So if Metcalf plays, I'm still going to start him, still going to consider him a strong start against the Niners here in week 11. And then 
when it comes to anybody else, JSN, Tyler Lockett, in terms of wide receivers for the nine, or excuse me, for the Seahawks, I just had them as flex options on a weekly basis. Now, JSN, 37 fantasy points in week nine against the Rams. Let's not forget, 13 targets, seven grabs, 180 receiver yards, and two tutties. Probably the stronger flex option out of the bunch, but if Metcalf comes back uh, into the mix here, then that's going to impact volume. And let's not forget, Lockett scored a touchdown and had 15.3 fantasy points in Week 9 as well. So they are flex options, they are volatile, but I'll consider the higher ceiling play to be JSM. We'll find out. Now, when it comes to the Niners, I'm starting Debo every week as long as he's healthy because the floor is there. I think he has the safest floor out of the bunch in this wide receiver room for the Niners. When he's healthy, we start Debo. We know the upside is there. We know the floor is there. He's safe on a weekly basis. It's a good matchup. But Jawan Jennings, we talked a lot about Jawan Jennings going into week 10. Really encourage you guys to start Jawan Jennings. Really encourage you guys to get him off the waiver wire if he was still floating out there in a great matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's now lining up as that X wide receiver for the Niners, overtaking Brandon Ayuk's former um, position. And we're really seeing Ricky Pierce all play out of the slot. And I think this is working for both of these wide receivers as Jennings had 16.3 fantasy points, 11 targets, 7 grabs, 93 receiving yards this past week. And Ricky Pierce had 17.3 Fancy points, six targets, four grabs, 73 receiving yards, and a touchdown. So all three of these Niners wide receivers are very startable. Like this matchup, good divisional game here. Should have a good game script. I think we can have some confidence in Jennings, Pearsall, and Debo once again this week. And I think in terms of the Seattle Seahawks wide receivers, they can also all be considered somewhat starts as we move in to week 11. And along, we have the Falcons traveling to face the Denver Broncos. So tough matchup here for Drake, London, and company. But over the past two weeks or so, this Broncos secondary, even with a healthy Pat Sertain, hasn't looked as intimidating. So let's continue to roll with Drake, London, who had 17.7 fantasy points in Week 10. 12 targets, 8 grabs, 97 receiving yards. He continues to be a strong start on a weekend, week out basis, single digits on the season just twice. I'm not going to bench Drake London even against Pat Sertain and company. Darnell Mooney, solid flex option, solid start, 10 targets, 5 catches, 96 receiving yards, 14.6 fantasy points in week 10. I would continue to start Darnell Mooney. Uh, you've got Mooney and Drake London, both in the top 10 at the wide receiver position at this point in the season. So continue to roll with them. It might not be the best matchup on paper, but like I said, I'm not going to panic about it. Uh, Ray Ray McLeod is a sit if you're super desperate in a very deep league. He might get you five or six points. <laughs> if, if Drake London gets banged up, he might score a touchdown like we saw in week nine. But yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and sit Ray Ray McLeod. Just not enough upside for me this week. Now, Cortland Sutton has quietly been very, very good over the past couple of weeks. Uh, 17 or more fantasy points in three straight games. 15 or more fantasy points in every game except for two since week four. Uh, but the downs have been pretty low with 5.2 fantasy points in week five and a goose egg in week seven. But sticking to the past three weeks, he has been fantastic with either 100 or more receiving yards or a touchdown in his last three games. So um, it was a tough matchup this past week, too, against the Kansas City Chiefs, and he still had 70 receiving yards off of six grabs for a touchdown. So I would continue to roll with him against the Atlanta Falcons. I like this matchup. Uh, Bo Nix has looked very good. We've talked a lot about Bo Nix over the past couple weeks. Um, we'll save that for the quarterback video, but he had a very clean game against the Kansas City Chiefs. So home game for the Broncos this week. Fire up Cortland Sutton with confidence. And then when it comes to the wide receivers outside of Cortland Sutton, I know Devon Vele had a big game, 13.9 fantasy points against the Chiefs, scored a touchdown, but in the three previous weeks, 5.8 or less fantasy points. Troy Franklin, just 1.9 fantasy points this past week. Not enough consistency, not enough of upside. I'm not looking at Franklin or Vele as potential options here in week 11. All right, next up, we got a good matchup between the Chiefs and the Bills. And let's start with the Chiefs side of things. So last week, I told you guys, D-Hop was no more than a flex for me, which is ironic because he's playing Pat Sertain, who we just talked about. Um, and that was my reasoning. You know, I just 
kind of worried about the Chiefs passing attack against the Broncos. But sometimes those same division games get that weird feeling. So I, I didn't like Hopkins that much this past week. Coming off of the huge performance in Week 9 where he had 28.6 fantasy points and two touchdowns is a stark difference between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers secondary and the Denver Broncos secondary. And then this week we get the Buffalo Bills secondary, which has been one of the best units in terms of fantasy points allowed to the wide receiver position so far on the year. But I like the game script here. I'm going to say you can roll with Hopkins. He's probably more in the flex area, to be honest. But my main point is I am okay with the matchup this week due to game scripts. So if you own Hopkins, you want to roll with him. I think that's fine, but tamper your expectations. I don't quite know if we're going to see that high of a ceiling that we saw in week nine until, well, maybe the Chiefs play the the Panthers in, in week 12, and that's when. But this should be a good game. It will be interesting to see what happens. Now, Xavier Worthy, I, I, I've i tried to keep the faith with Xavier Worthy. I've been you know, pretty positive on Xavier Worthy for most of the season. And, you know, that week eight performance with 13.7 fantasy points uh, kind of helped things. But since then, negative one point against the Bucks, 2.1 points this past week against the uh, Broncos. Just no thank you. Just Xavier Worthy might be droppable at this point. I, I, I It's just very, very difficult to trust him and his usage in this offense. In terms of anybody else here, McCole Hardman, Justin Watson, Juju Smith-Schuster, if he's ever healthy again, uh, I'm just staying away from them. Uh, Keep an eye on Juju. He has dropped to 14% rostered, and he might return this week. And he could be interesting, don't get me wrong. Uh, But really, this Chiefs offense, outside of Kareem Hunt, Travis Kelsey, and I guess now DeAndre Hopkins, very difficult to trust overall in fantasy. All right, and speaking of difficult to trust, let's move to the Bills wide receivers room. And uh, sorry, I had to readjust the screen there because Keon Coleman has now been listed as out during the time I was recording this. He's not going to be an option this week. So that leaves Amari Cooper, who, uh, according to Sean McDermott, is quote unquote improving in terms of his wrist injury, wrist injury keeping Keon Coleman out. Don't know what water they're drinking there in Buffalo, but it's doing something to these wide receivers' wrists. Nonetheless, uh, with no Keon Coleman, I do feel a little bit better about Amari Cooper, who is a little shaky on going into this week. But if he's fully healthy, if he plays, good game script here. I think you can roll with Amari Cooper. Um, Really the only wide receiver that I I like in this matchup, which is not a good matchup, by the way, but I I like the game script here, uh, is Khalil Shakir. Shakir, double digits. Every game he's played in this year, except for week six against the Jets, the ceiling's not always high, but if you start Shakir, you're probably safe for like five or six catches, 10, 11 fantasy points. If he gets more catches than that or scores a touchdown, then the ceiling's a little bit higher. So Shakir, I think a good start this week. Cooper, startable, especially now with no Keon Coleman, but maybe tamper your expectations there. Now, if there's one wide receiver on this team who could see, you know, better overall volume. It's going to be Mac Hollins who had 12.6 fantasy points in week 10, 14 fantasy points in week nine. He sits at just 3% rostered. Very difficult to trust Mac Hollins, but he does seem to be the wide receiver that Josh Allen tends to target when other wide receivers are injured outside of Khalil Shakir. So Uh, You'd have to be pretty desperate, but Matt Collins is a name to keep an eye on, especially if Amari Cooper is not able to go this week. So shaky situation with these Bills wide receivers, pretty shaky situation with the Chiefs wide receivers as well, but we should get a good overall matchup between the Chiefs and the Bills. We'll see what happens in week 11. All right, Sunday night football, we have the Bengals traveling to face the Chargers. Jamar Chase, your wide receiver, one by four bar in fantasy football 55.4 fantasy points in week 10 and he was already the wide receiver one before week 10 17 targets 11 catches 264 receiving yards three tutties we all watch thursday night football boy oh boy you're starting to march chase no matter what not a great matchup on paper here but the chargers didn't play that well against uh calvin Ridley this past week as we just discussed earlier in the video so yes start jamar chase uh he's having a fantastic 
season, to say the least. If T. Higgins plays, if he's healthy, I've got some questions like, should I drop T. Higgins? Uh, no, keep T. Higgins. He's listed as day-to-day, -day, dealing with that quad injury. There is a strong chance he doesn't play, I would argue, um, because the Bengals have a bye week in week 12, but also the Bengals coming off of a tough loss to the Ravens. Um, they are in a position where they, they need to win as many games as possible. So I don't quite know that they're going to intentionally try to rest Higgins through uh, the bye week, especially against a good Chargers unit. So um, if, if Higgins plays, I'm still starting him. And don't be too panicked on Higgins when he does play very solid. Uh, Andre Usavis, 4.9 fantasy points this past week, not starting Yoshi. Uh, Jermaine Burton, um, 2.1 fantasy points in Week 10. I'm not starting him. It's just Chase and Higgins. That's it for the Bengals wide receivers room going into the week. Now, we look at the Chargers. I think you can basically start any of these players, arguably. Uh, Lad McConkey, I have as a start, and Quentin Johnston is in the flex area, but Johnston's been essentially the better wide receiver out of the two in the past two weeks. 11.4 uh, fantasy points in Week 9 for Lad, 7.2 in Week 10, 22 in Week 9 for Johnston. 10.4 in week 10 and Johnson has a touchdown in the last two games. So both of these guys startable, maybe lad should be closer to a flex area, uh, but they're both, I think solid starts and what should be a nice competitive matchup here. Uh, then Josh Palmer is still in the flex area, but a very risky flex and maybe should be closer to a sit as he only had one catch, two targets this past week, 4.6 fantasy points. But I'm expecting a good game script between the Bengals and the Chargers, and I'm hoping that the defenses bend a little bit in this game, including the Chargers defense, so that we get some nice offensive production from both sides here. So I don't prefer to start Josh Palmer. I would far rather flex Quentin Johnston, um, who sits at 59% roster, and I told you guys going into Week 10, Pick up Quentin Johnston now. He had another solid game. He's going to jump up in roster percentage now. Um, but lad, Quentin Johnston, startable. Palmer, desperation start at best. Chase, if Higgins plays, both solid starts here in week 11. All right, final game of the week. We have the Texans traveling to face the Cowboys. Let's start with the Texans side of things. Unfortunately, did not see Nico Collins return from injury in week 10 against the Lions. I think the Texans could have certainly used him the way that game turned out, but nonetheless, we'll probably get him back in week 11 against the Cowboys. I think he's definitely very startable in his return from injury. This was your wide receiver one in fantasy football before he went down in week five. Now, depending on how this game goes, I mean, you never know in the NFL, but if this is a pretty one-sided game. Uh, we might see kind of Collins like on a snap count or something eased back into action. This is a good game to ease it back in, theoretically. Nonetheless, I'm going to probably start Nico Collins if I own him, but he's probably more of like in that flex area potentially just because it's his first game back from injury. So there's some risk there, but. I still feel pretty good about Nico Collins this week. Tank Dell, on the other hand, is 8.3 fantasy points this past week. Very disappointing, um, but still had nine targets. So I actually like him more if Nico plays. Nonetheless, either way, if he's the wide receiver one or the wide receiver two, this is a good matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. So he's still a strong start this week. Just disappointing in a good game script this past week against a Lions secondary that, well, the secondary is a weaker part of the defense, but. Looked pretty dang good, at least the second half of the game this past week. Uh, looking at everybody else, John Mechie, not so bad this past week. 18.4 fantasy points, had a touchdown, five catches off of six grabs, 74 receiving yards. Definitely a name to keep an eye on uh, as we have no Stephon Diggs. And Collins has been banged up, all that stuff. But he's also been really inconsistent over the past three weeks. 5.9 points in week eight, zero in week nine, 18.4 this past week. Definitely a name to keep an eye on, but I don't want to get too excited. Xavier Hutchinson, 2.6 points this past week, and Bobby Trees, 1.1 point this past week. So, yeah, it's Collins, it's Dell for me, and we can keep an eye on John Mechie, but we'll see what happens in this matchup. Now, for the Cowboys, it is on paper a good matchup. The Texans have not been a good secondary on the season, but we all saw the Cowboys this past week. I thought CeeDee Lamb would have better production and, you know, I mean, maybe should have caught a touchdown in this game if the uh, sun wasn't in his eyes, but 10 targets, 6 catches, 21 receiving yards, just 8.4 fantasy points. He's still flexible, but until we see something 
emerge here out of this offense, which with Cooper Rush or Trey Lance, a quarterback, I just don't know that we're going to. I had more faith this past week. Broke down, you know, CeeDee Lamb and Cooper Rush's numbers in 2022. They were very different, but things just look different this year. Philly also has looked very good defensively. So you never know. CeeDee Lamb is still flexible, but I'm just leaving him at that. And then Jalen Tolbert, Gavante Turpin, anybody else on this team, just no thank you. I'm staying far away from them unless we see some consistency emerge at the quarterback position. That'll do it for today's video. There's every single matchup, every single wide receiver, and who you should be starting or sitting as we get into week 11 of the fantasy season. And don't forget, guys, I will be answering all comments on this video. So if you guys need anything whatsoever moving into week 11 of the fantasy season, be sure to drop me a comment. I'll make sure to answer every comment, every question before Thursday night football and before Sunday's slate of games. On top of that, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel because we're going to have everything you could possibly need throughout the week to help you dominate week 11 of the fantasy season. So with that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on The Catch.